Spencer Riley, the uh, former ball. He had a big win uh, for Jeff County uh, over the weekend. Uh, already some congratulations on our message board to you as uh, Spencer a winner no matter where he goes. Now, the other question I wanted to ask you is your most famous season opener during your time at Tennessee was Syracuse. That was a very good football team. Now they face, oh, yeah. and now they face Chattanooga, which no offense to Chattanooga, I've got a lot of respect for what they do at their program, having spent some time in that city. Um, so I don't want this to sound like I'm degrading them, but there is no comparison talent level. Which would you? Shouldn't be right. Which would you rather face? Because there are advantages, I would think, of getting attention if it's a good opponent, as opposed to figuring some things out in what should should feel like a preseason game. I mean, everybody has their own philosophy, right? Uh, we, I have my own philosophy. I want to I want to play somebody early. It's tough, you know what I mean. I want I want to try to play a tough schedule early to set you up for later in the year, uh, especially as as college footballs went to the playoff system, right? You, you got to be able to, but you got to be able to get to the playoffs too. So, I mean, there, there's a double-edged sword there. You want to play a quality opponent that gets you ready for those uh, those opportunities down the road. Uh, you know what I mean? Like when we played Oak Ridge Friday night, it's a great football game. You know what I mean? So, um, we, we just – it set us up for move, hopefully moving down the road. Yeah, Spencer, what – you know – one of the things that I gather is when you have a tough win early, whatever that win be, it does seem to bring a team together a lot more. Pitt two years ago was the second game of the year, but it was an ugly overtime win, and Tennessee should have won by more, but winning the way they did, I felt made them closer. That 98 team, did that Syracuse win make you guys closer at all just because of what you had to fight to win that game? Well, I just think it was a uh, a very good football team for us. You know what I mean? That we, we worked – daily to get better and and just continue to improve as we moved around each and every day do i think it made us better do i think it made us closer we're already pretty close man i mean that's the reason we were able to go out and and come up with that, that win um totally different in my opinion interesting so when you talk about an opponent like utc let's okay. let's assume that things go according to to plan as most would think and Tennessee's up three or four touchdowns in the first half. What what do you hope to gain? Assuming that's a what, what are your goals as a coach? Assuming that's one sided, what are your goals other than getting the win, which is obviously the biggest thing? Well, I think too, you know, with the way the rule is read now and the way the rule works, you know, they can play in any four games throughout the year and still be red shotted, right? That's a great point. Um, I think one. Hey, this could be an opportunity to get some young guys in and play and see where they're at early in the year, right? Uh, to where the pressure pressure lever is not like a pressure cooker. Uh, and then you get them in a game. You then you you can then you can pick and choose when you want to try to get those guys in. You're trying to see if they uh, can do it. You know what I mean? And can they be a contributor? Do they need to be somebody that you put on more special teams because they have now developed into a quality backup? Caleb, yeah. So, Spencer, is if there are questions about your – does the difference between an easy or tough opponent, does it also depend on maybe how sure the coaching staff is of their roster? Like if they're a little less sure, would they rather have an easier opponent so they can maybe work in some few things and test some things out? I mean, for sure. You know I mean? I look at it that way as well. You know, you kind of kind of see where you're at, where your program's at, and what do they need at that point in time. So – I can see why Chattanooga is a great, great opportunity for Chattanooga. You know, it's an in-state. You and look too. You look at it from an institution standpoint. Is uh, University of Tennessee is playing another Tennessee school, and it's definitely a good opportunity for the other schools in the state of Tennessee to get to come to Tennessee and play. It helps their recruiting. It helps our recruiting. It gets our fan bases ready to go and be ready to rock and roll for the next ball game. Spencer, if you're a coach and it's an in-state opponent, I know Josh Heupel likes putting up points. I know that he's mindful of some of the records based off what I've been told. Um, do you treat them any different because they're an in-state school if you have an opportunity to, I don't know, drop 60 off? Yeah, 100%. 
Yeah, their job is to stop you. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not your job. To, it's not your job to take care of the score. It's your job to stop. Them. Absolutely. So, yeah. you score sixty. You score sixty. That's on them for not stopping. You. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button, and uh, Caleb, feel free to jump in there. As I remind you that portions of the program are brought to you by our good friend Don Self. Don Self at State Farm. Customer service still matters. For forty years, they built their reputation on taking care of their customers in the greater Chattanooga area. Call 423-396-2126. Go to donself.net, donself.net to check. That's my guy. That's my insurance guy right there. That's your insurance guy? Sure is, man. Don Self's a great man. Don Self is a great man. How awesome is that? How in the world did you? I don't know how you got hooked up with Don Self, but everyone else. When I was at UTC, that's how I got hooked up with him. And I've been been my insurance guy ever since. (laughs) That is fantastic. All right, Caleb, get us back on football because uh, uh, insurance is settled. It's Don Self. 100%. So, Spencer, going back to the Syracuse game, you guys talk you are already really close, and I believe that because I've heard a lot of the stories. Um, but after beating Syracuse, y'all did finally get over the hump and beat Florida for the first time in six years. And I'll never forget sure. watching that game thinking you guys, you guys just seemed so much more relaxed facing Florida that year than you did in years previous facing Florida. That was just from an outsider's perspective. So do you, how much of an impact did the Syracuse game have on that? Did overcoming that Syracuse win, getting the relief of the win, how much of that did that have y'all kind of a little more relaxed for the Florida game that time around? Well, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I couldn't. I can't. I'll be honest with you. I couldn't tell you if we were more relaxed or not. I mean, hell, it was the next ball game in the line of games we had to play. You know what I mean? So. Uh, it didn't matter who you're line on line up against. That's what we we're going to go do is, is just play the next opponent and happen to be Florida and uh, found a way to win another football game in an ugly fashion. And, um, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, an ugly win turns out to be the prettiest victory. Very true. Let me, let me ask you this. When you're getting your kids' attention, um, is, it, is it a benefit in preseason camp and the offseason – to have a name or a very good opponent to say, Hey, listen, if you don't show up Florida state, you could get embarrassed. Um, Is, is that any sort of motivating factor as a coach when you do have a strong opponent to start the season? Sure. Uh, Here's the way I look at that from a coaching perspective and then from a player's perspective. No, as a coach, you know what I mean? Uh, As a coach, your kids need to understand that, Hey, uh, it doesn't matter who we're playing. We got to give our best every time we step on the football field. And we got to play at the highest level we can play at. We got to play at a championship caliber level every time we play. And it doesn't matter if you're playing tiddlywinks, checkers, whatever. We got to play at the championship level every day. Um, That's from a coach's perspective. From a player's perspective, it shouldn't matter. You're going to go out and play the greatest game in the world against. in front of 107,000 people, we got to go out and be freaking dominant because that's what our fan base wants. Yep. Good stuff. Uh, Spencer, uh, who you got this week? We got Sevier County. Yeah, Sevier County. Smoky Bears. All right. Uh, do, bring home a championship. We're rooting for you and we look forward to visiting with you next week. Sounds great, guys. Talk to y'all soon. Thanks. Have a great day. Spencer oh. Riley, great stuff. I've, I think coaches say either, don't you, Caleb, that coaches will say in the in the offseason that it was nice to have – or they'll say after the first game. They're not going to say Chattanooga's terrible. I want to play Chattanooga because they're horrible. But you can say after the game that's a chance to fine-tune stuff. Whereas if you play a Syracuse or a strong opponent to start the season, like when Georgia Tech played Florida State, I do believe that – Georgia Tech was probably told in the offseason, you better prepare um, or you're going to get embarrassed in Dublin by Florida State. I think that can be a motivating factor as well. So I think you can use it to either advantage. I think you can. Um, the, I think the latter is more of an advantage. I'm just going to be honest, guys. And um, I'm sorry to say this. Uh, shouldn't say this, but Chattanooga um, – there's very little you can learn from that game. And even if you figure out guys that can play a certain way, okay, maybe they can play against Chattanooga, but that doesn't mean they can play it against Florida. And I mean, I, I said this last year with, um, 
you know, you know, I don't want to talk about him anymore because he's not on the roster, but Elijah Herring, when he stepped in for Keenan Peeler for Keenan Peeler being hurt, okay, yeah, he could be, he knew, he understood all the fundamentals of playing the position. And he was very, and he was physically gifted enough to where he was elite against Austin P and he was elite against Virginia. Then SEC play happened and the lateral quickness just wasn't there. No, I don't think that you can look at a game tape and learn much, but I think you can learn a lot from players in in terms of how they approach the game. I look at uh, Kobe Thomas, for instance. He's been a lifelong Tennessee fan, but he's never seen a Tennessee game inside the stadium. So is he going to go bonkers? I mean, is he? I mean, th- there are people who, when they run through that tee, they lose it emotionally for a little bit. Um, how you play in that actual game environment. So I'm going to, I think you can learn a lot about a player's maturity and ability to be depended on. But when it comes to physically, no, you're right. I mean, y- y- you can, you can look fantastic. I think it's more about eyeballs, eyeballs to eyeballs on the sideline, how a guy's reacting to play, playing in front of a hundred thousand people for the first time than anything they do physically on the field. Give me that. I'll give you that. That's that's fair. I mean, I've seen I've seen players who light it up in practice and just don't just can't put it together in game time. I mean, they just panic. And uh, the most obvious one is Nathan Peterman when he was at Tennessee. Mm, pretty good one. 